election is heating up. Stay up to date. State of the Race is the podcast series available wherever you get your Studios America podcast episodes. It's in the same feed. Just a little bonus to throw it out here, here and there and more and more as we get into the election season. Be sure to check out the show on YouTube as well, youtube.com slash America. Like and comment on the videos and hit the bell for notifications if you would. We appreciate it. Glenn Beck is here to talk about the brewing color revolution. Biden's polling continues to circle the bull. I will uh, tell you the latest. But we're going to start by doing Nicole Shanahan. Now, Nicole Shanahan, you might not know who that is. Uh, she is RFK Jr.'s VP choice. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do something on, on her is because of people I talk, I've talked to around here uh, in my normal life who would probably normally be otherwise be Trump voters, um, certainly not Biden voters, uh, otherwise be Trump voters, but were sort of persuaded by RFK uh, in some of the stuff he said during COVID, you know, much of which we've talked about here and some of which I agree with strongly, um, but kind of tempted into that RFK Jr. thing. Right. Like, is this, you know, is this guy, he says a lot of good things. Right. I mean, he's certainly famously against vaccine mandates, which I would agree with him on. Uh, he is uh, pretty good on Bitcoin. Suspiciously, suddenly good on the border. Uh, there's been a few things he's been OK on and, and passionately against covid restrictions, which is, look, it's one of the defining issues of our life. Right. So I can understand why people would be interested in someone who is, uh, you know, against government control over our lives in a very strenuous time. So it was interesting talking to these people. A lot of them were encouraged by RFK's candidacy and considered him and then had a real hiccup when he named his vice president. And, you know, people were talking about Aaron Rodgers and, you know, a bunch of different people that you know, maybe weren't established politicians, but were people who were, you know, liked, well liked, or maybe had some views that people liked. And then Nicole Shanahan. Well, who the heck is Nicole Shanahan? No one knew who, even who she was. Let's go through who she is a little bit here. I mean, we know that she agrees with RFK Jr. on vaccines, kind of a central part of their relationship. But what else is there to her? Um, let me give you some of the history. Uh, running mates history, one billion dollars, cocaine and a fling with Elon Musk, says The New York Times. Ms. Shanahan has a fortune of more than $1 billion that stems largely from her divorce settlement last year from Sergey Brin, a founder of Google, whose net worth exceeds $145 billion, three people with knowledge of her finances said. Now, this goes back a long time before Sergey Brin. She had some success on her own. She was kind of in this tech world. Um, in 2011, she began dating a tech investor in San Francisco. They had a relationship. It blossomed into a potential marriage. In 2014, she meets Sergey Brin, uh, one of the founders of Google, at a yoga festival in Lake Tahoe. Uh, the, I mean, the centerpiece of all conservative candidates, obviously, um, a, a Lake Tahoe yoga conference. Um, she, he had recently separated from his uh, wife at the time, and um, Sergey Brin and his and Ms. Shanahan got together. And they were together, um, kind of went on a whirlwind affair. Um, this is right before Shanahan was scheduled to get married to the other guy. So she's dating this one guy. They're about to get married. She finds uh, the Google guy, has a big affair with him. That goes on for a while. Um, right after, days after they get married, this guy discovers the affair by looking through uh, the phone records. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of a problem. Uh, says, I don't want to get this thing annulled. When he threatens to get the uh, relationship annulled, according to several sources, she threatens to basically kill herself if he does that. So instead, she winds up filing for a divorce, which is you know less about you know blame, and uh, she basically um, splits and goes with Sergey. Now, Sergey Brin has a relationship with her for several years. They have a child. They name the child Echo. Uh, this child um, winds up. Um, coming down with uh, with autism, diagnosed with autism. This is sort of the foundation of her um, beliefs on vaccines that align with RFK Jr.'s beliefs. Um, she, uh, you know, is kind of bring, bringing herself up as sort of an activist in this realm. She pays $200,000 for a photo shoot so she can be featured in San Francisco uh, magazine. Uh, in an article called Nicole Shanahan is Fighting the Good Fight. She paid for uh, a couple hundred thousand to be featured in that with at least the photography. And then uh, she winds up throwing a birthday party for herself 
Uh, this is a Studio 54 themed birthday party. This is one you may have heard of. This is in 2021. They had some real troubles around the COVID time, which, you know, look, a lot of people did. It was not an easy time. Um, but at a party she was at, she runs into Elon Musk. They take ketamine. Um, they, she, you know, he, she had apparently been taking other drugs at other times throughout her life, had an issue with this at least at one point, took ketamine. Uh, allegedly. Um, this is, of course, legal with a prescription. Um, they disappeared, Shanahan and Musk, together. This is a story that kind of made the rounds back a couple of years ago. Uh, they apparently had sex. At least this is what uh, the accusation was. Multiple people confirmed this. They said that she also told this to um, Sergey Brin and uh, several other friends, family, and advisors. They separated after this, and uh, they filed for divorce recently, uh, soon after that. Now, Musk and Shanahan have denied that this was an affair. They said they were just talking. Uh, who knows what the truth is there, but the, the divorce definitely did uh, occur. And the divorce, of course, is a, a, a good chunk of why she's on the ticket. We'll get to that in a second. During their five-year marriage, Ms. Shanahan partied with Silicon Valley's elite and used recreational drugs, including cocaine, ketamine, and psychedelic mushrooms, according to eight people in documents reviewed by the New York Times. Ms. Shanahan and Mr. Brin separated after she had a sexual encounter with Musk that we just described, although they, it is important to note they both deny. Uh, for years, Ms. Shanahan donated to Democrats, according to donor filings. In 2020, she gave $25,000 to a political action committee backing President Biden. So this is someone who comes from the left. Uh, last year, she gave $6,600 to Mr. Kennedy. That's the max allowed for individual contributors when he was running as a Democrat for the presidential nomination. Now, this is one of the things that I think is important to understand. If you happen to be RFK Jr., you know, the guy's got on a lot of conservative podcasts, including on this network. Um, he has really tried hard to persuade people who might vote for Trump to not vote for Trump and instead vote for him. This has been a central point of his campaign, a central focus of what he's tried to do, win people over from the right. But when he had his biggest decision to make, the person who would be in charge of the country, one heartbeat away, I mean, again, RFK Jr., Certainly looks a lot younger than some of the other candidates, but I mean, he's still in his late, what, late 60s? I think he's 67 years old. Uh, one heartbeat away would be Nicole Shanahan. When you have that choice to make, that's who he chose. Someone who has a far left background and sort of a quirky one. In recent weeks, Ms. Shanahan has largely scrubbed her social media feeds. Two people familiar with her in the Kennedy campaign said her social accounts are now populated with shots of herself without makeup at a farmer's market, as well as wearing Western gear and posing with rifles in Texas. Uh, OK, um, in the past with, with her partner, in the past, her feeds showed uh, her dressed up for high end events and posing for selfies. So, look, this was a a tech elitist, right? I mean, I, everyone knew that at the time. This was not a surprise. Now, she's trying to pose as something a little bit different. This is not totally crazy for campaign. People change their persona all the time to try to appeal to different voters. But it is important to know where she came from. And where she came from was really a left-wing tech bro background. She was, you know, bouncing around that circuit with various different tech bros, um, and that was sort of her history. When you're choosing your vice president, you're making a very important choice. And the fact that he, instead of choosing someone, like, and again, like, I don't know much about Aaron Rodgers' politics. The only thing he's really kind of famous for is, uh, you know, I think, you know, leaving sort of his faith background, but also uh, being very pro, uh, you know, anti-COVID vaccines. You know, I don't know what we know about enough about him to know his beliefs, but he's sort of portrayed, at least in the media, as this right wing figure. Um, you know, some of the other people that we know he was talking to behind the scenes were more conservative leaning figures. He decided not to go that route. He decided to go a different route and go with a left wing tech entrepreneur um, who, uh, you know, look, has some attributes that might be attractive. Uh, she's she's younger, uh, which is obviously important in this particular election. Um, and she's very wealthy. Now, uh, the fringe world of, uh, of RFK Jr.'s VP pick is a story and NBC News pointed out. And it's important to understand that if, if, if he was the Democratic nominee for president, which, again, is where he began this campaign, trying to get the Democratic nomination, if he was uh, the winner of that contest, NBC News would not be writing this story. It's, uh, <laughs> it was, that would not occur. But they wrote a story about her views. They said she was a big-time Democratic donor. She and her politics changed in the last five years, a journey she attributes to the pandemic. This is not unique 
to her. Uh, several people have gone through this transition. Um, she found in 2022, again, these views are really new. So even if you like these views, they're super duper new. And I get nervous about this. I, I say this to Glenn uh, every once in a while when we're talking about uh, Tulsi Gabbard, who we both like as a person. She has some really great attributes. It makes me nervous she was the head, uh, as it does with Glenn. Uh, someone who was ahead of a Bernie Sanders campaign, you know, eight years ago, might be the president of the United States. Like, that makes me nervous. Like, I, I like the fact that she's changed some of her views, but it makes me nervous that someone could hold views like that that recently and we'd put them in charge of the country. Uh, it seems that makes me nervous. Well, these are new views for Shanahan as well. She was kind of a far leftist. And then she discovered Jack Krause. He's a neurosurgeon turned paleo diet, diet advocate and wellness guru. Um, he has uh, he talks about natural healing uh, quite a bit. This, of course, aligns with many of RFK Jr.'s vibes as well. Krause's ideas, including that sunscreen is unnecessary and that genital sunbathing promotes fertility. Uh, COVID was a compliance test designed to keep people indoors. Um, it, this exists far outside the mainstream, according to NBC News. Uh, central to all of his beliefs is the power that the sun can he heal nearly all chronic disease, including autism. This autism is a really important part of Shanahan's journey because her uh, child is affected with it. Cruz lives in El Salvador. He said in 2022, he uh, was giving advice regarding treatment of Shanahan's daughter um, and explained to her, quote, through a punch in the mouth that she was in fact responsible for her daughter's autism because she had allowed her to receive uh, both uh, vaccines, but also artificial lights and electromagnetic radiation pumping through her home. Um, she said that they decided, um, she even took it well when he accused her husband, Sergey Brin, of being part of a plot between big tech and the government to use blue light as a means to control people after September 11th. Um, Shanahan adopted, uh, adapted her home after talking to Cruz and restricted Wi-Fi and cellular connections and converted her chlorine pool to salt water because that was going to be uh, better for the child. Uh, now, look, you can believe these things. Uh, you may very well believe all of them, I don't know. But I will say that, like, number one, they're brand new to her. And number two, not necessarily aligned um, with, uh, with others' uh, views. Let's put it that way. Now, RFK, of course, has also been all over the board himself on abortion. He's basically taken every possible position. Uh, if there is a position about abortion that you can take, RFK Jr. has taken it during his campaign. He was all about restrictions at one point. Then he said there should be no restrictions at any point during the pregnancy. He's all over the board on this. He's now kind of talking about a 15 to 18 week limit. This would allow about 95 to 98 percent of abortions to go on. So calling it a limit is a little bit of a stretch. Uh, now, Shanahan is actually farther to the left of RFK Jr. on this particular topic. Uh, and RFK Jr. is proudly pro-choice. Uh, that's the one thing he's kind of been consistent on. He's just been all over the board on the restrictions. RFK Jr.'s campaign said late Thursday, he supports restricting abortion access at fetal viability. So that gives you about a, what, 20 to 20 four week window in there. That would basically allow for 99 point something percent of abortions. Uh, comments from uh, Nicole Shanahan about the campaign supporting federal limits between 15 to 18 weeks of gestation, or gestation do not reflect Kennedy's views. So in this particular moment in this campaign, it seems like Shanahan's slightly to the right of RFK Jr., but honestly, it's really hard to tell. Kennedy's position differs from Ms. Shanahan's in that he believes the cutoff should be fetal, vi fetal viability. Both are aligned with the emerging national consensus of no restrictions up until a certain point and restrictions thereafter, uh, says uh, Stephanie Sphere, one of the campaign spokespeople. Now, this gets to the point of why would he choose Nicole Shanahan? Well, part of this is they're really aligned. I mean, if you kind of look at the history here, she's kind of the perfect pick for RFK Jr., she is kind of, her background is hard left, which is the same as RFK Jr. They agree on environmental policy. Obviously, vaccines are part of that, uh, going back a long way as well. They're very aligned on a lot of this policy, 
minor differences. You know, is it 95% of abortions allowed or is it 99%? Uh, you know, you can go back and forth there, but there's not much that separates them policy-wise, so that actually does make sense. They also have kind of a similar life history. I mean, she is nowhere near uh, as promiscuous uh, personally as RFK Jr. is. I mean, he is... I mean, he makes, you know, Donald Trump blush. People are like, oh, gosh, Donald Trump hooked up with a porn star. I mean, even if he did, uh, that's nothing with RFK. He was literally keeping a ledger of all the women he was sleeping with. Uh, you know, uh, you know, his, his ex-wife found the diary, saw all of this and wound up killing herself over it. I mean, it's a horrible, horrible history, which to his credit, I mean, he's owned up to. I mean, even in the diary when he was kind of listing his conquests, he's talking about how he was struggling and he couldn't stop himself. I mean, he had a real problem with this. She's not that bad, but she's had several dalliances that have been well documented. Um, the one thing she is, though, is really, really rich. Like, super duper duper rich, which makes her an incredible VP uh, candidate. Why? And this is sort of a hack of the dumb election laws that I don't believe should exist at all, by the way. Uh, these campaign finance laws that allow anyone on the ticket to donate to the max amount. So obviously this benefits someone like Donald Trump, who's very, very wealthy. He can give money to his campaign if he so chooses. But RFK Jr., while wealthy, does not have that kind of money. Nicole Shanahan does have that kind of money. Not quite Donald Trump money, uh, but a lot of money. Nicole Shanahan uh, reportedly received a billion dollars in her divorce from Sergey Brin. And she was also rich before she kind of got to the Sergey Brin uh, relationship. This is a picture of what they look like together. Her and Sergey Brin, look at them. What a nice couple that unfortunately does not exist. Now, there's this weird thing that goes on. While they all are aligned and have sort of run in similar circles, they don't know each other very well, RFK Jr. and Shanahan. Um, they, about a month after uh, they, he had named her as VP, he was unclear as how she was spending her time, thought she was at the border. She was there for a much shorter period of time that they talked about. Um, she, he had thought she was doing interviews. She wasn't doing these interviews. Um, he doesn't know what her schedule is. And he just said, I just ran into her yesterday, like as if they don't really know each other and are working on the same campaign. But she is dumping money into his run. And she, he needs it, by the way, because of terrible third party and independent laws in this country, which do everything they can to keep people like RFK Jr. off the ticket. You need tons of cash to throw at this issue. So I think strategically, it's a smart move to get somebody who's got a billion dollars on your ticket. It's just like, is that the motivation you want? Uh, by the way, another $8 million came recently from Nicole Shanahan. Shanahan. She's dumped millions and millions in. RFK Jr.'s running mate, uh, Nicole Shanahan, said on Wednesday night she'd given another $8 million to their presidential campaign as it tries to get on ballots. The new donation, which she announced at a comedy fundraiser in Nashville, brings her total contribution to the campaign to $10 million, not including the $4 million that she gave to a super PAC backing Mr. Kennedy to help pay for his Super Bowl ad. She gave uh, $2 million just after uh, he named her. And you know, the way this is being presented is that she basically bought her way onto the ticket. I don't think that's fair, uh, honestly. I think it's a, certainly a big part of the calculus as to why you'd want someone who does, people don't really know. But it's important to understand that with RFK, she's pretty well aligned with what he's trying to do. If you have this impression of RFK Jr. as this sort of right-wing figure, it might surprise you that he would name a leftist tech entrepreneur uh, to be on the ticket. But really, it's very consistent with what he believes. Yes, some of the tech stuff and the vaccine stuff is aligned, and you kind of would expect that with RFK Jr. It's been central to his life. Also, what's been central to his life is environmental policy. Uh, you know, you go back and you see all the stuff that he's talked about when it comes to the environment. He's a global warming extremist. There's no other way to put it. And she is, too. All that's uh, together and, and, and aligned very, very well. But they are very well on personal history. They align very well on policy. These are people who are simpatico. This is actually a pretty, they don't know each other particularly well, but it's a pretty good match when it comes to having someone on your candidate. I mean, certainly a better match policy-wise than maybe Donald Trump and Mike, Mike Pence were. Um, so if you're looking at RFK Jr., if you're considering RFK Jr., you should definitely also look at Nicole Shanahan, and, and it might give you better insight as to who this person is. Because while he presents himself one way when he comes on conservative media, his entire life tells the opposite story. And understanding that story, even if you're willing to believe his conversion story over the past few months, uh, that is something that is incredibly important to inform 
a very important vote. Gen 90 is the latest breakthrough from GenuXL. This is the best in skin care, and, you know, it works on all the things that you might have issues with. You look in the mirror, you might be like, ah, I wish that looked a little bit better, like maybe bags and puffiness under your eyes. It can help you with these instantly. Um, it can help, we, help, we, help you reduce the appearance of looking older anywhere you use it. It's around the eyes, maybe crow's feet are an issue, laugh lines, whatever it is, the chin. Uh, never worry about your skin or your confidence again with Gen 90 because, you know, it's luxurious. It's paraben-free. It's silky smooth. It's the best of all of it. And right now, you can get classic under-eye bags and puffiness serum with every Gen 90 order and their GenuCell XV Collagen Builder Moisturizer with vitamin C and hyaluronic acid in a pure natural base for stunning results day after day. And you might say, look, there's a lot of claims GenuCell is making here. And that's true. They are making a lot of claims. And the way they back that up is to make you confident in that. They say, well, uh, you know, no risk here. We'll give you your money back if it's not working for you. Go to GenuCell.com right now for an incredible package over 50% off GenuCell's spring sale. Results guaranteed or your money back. And you can get this at GenuCell.com slash stew. If you order now, you give you a free limited edition spa box with bonus gifts and free shipping. It's GenuCell.com slash stew. GenuCell.com slash stew. G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash stew. Stu. I'm joined once again by Glenn Beck. He has a brand new special coming up tonight, 9 yeah, p.m. I Eastern. I was busy getting ready for it, uh, you know, putting on my tie, putting on my jacket, and I pull in for your stupid. I mean, for this in, enchanting chat oh, we're cool. about to have. Oh, wow. Well, thank yeah. you. It's, it's a big so show. It's it a is big a show. big show. There's multiple chalkboards already lined yeah. up over there. Yeah. How many are we going to get out of this thing? Uh, well, <laughs> we could get four. We might have as many as seven. Don't know yet. Seven chalkboards. <laughs> yeah. Could be two. Okay. I don't know. Hey, who knows? Okay. Yeah. Well, right. it's something you should figure out. Yeah. You know? Well, I would if I... If you weren't here. This yeah, is the whole thing here. in this the way. This is the, so, you're, you're really holding me up. Because it's called, Are We in a Color Revolution? The yes. underground anti-Trump cabal threatening our republic. And mm -hmm. I, I, is it possible we won't get the answer to if we're in a color revolution because you're No, I'm going to give you the answer. Okay. I'm going to give it to you right now. Yes. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yes. That, you've ruined yeah. the entire, now I don't need to watch. Yeah. Well, no, there's mm -hmm. a lot of information in there, but mm -hmm. yes. Yes, you are. We are. Yeah, I, I really believe that we are. Can you, you don't need to give away the details of <laughs> our color revolution, but what is a color revolution for those who don't so know? So a color revolution is, um, is something that our CIA and our State Department uh, developed under the Cold War. Um, and we got really, really good at it in the last 15 years. Really good. Um, the Arab Spring was a color revolution. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, Libya, kind of a color revolution. I mean, the same people were involved, but it's not really a color revolution. Um, you have uh, Ukraine, color revolution. Belarus, color. Georgia, color revolution. We flipped all these countries because we didn't like the leadership, okay? Um, and now we're doing it here. But what's required, and this may actually go to say why the Democrats are allowing Joe Biden to run again with such a horrible record. For a true color revolution to happen, you have to have the man at top be a dictator, a Hitler, somebody that everybody can go, he's got to go. When you have that, you organize through the State Department and the CIA and NGOs, you organize the street level. It's top down, bottom up, inside out, except this is the actual how it's going to happen. Mm. And uh, we'll show you the connections and what, what could very well happen this, this fall. Part of this is, is going and talking about how it's an anti-Trump cabal, not Trump, obviously not currently president, uh, right. was former president. How, how does a color revolution happen with, against a guy who's not even in office? Uh, it happens like things, using things like uh, the Palestinians, where it, it's a short, the, the color revolutions are very short. They're very brief, destructive, and then they clamp down and stop, and you have a new head and new government, okay? So it's not a revolution that, like we think of like the American Revolution right. that went on for years. Mm -hmm. These are things that happen brutally, quickly, and then they're clamped down, all right? 
Um, so you can do it with just the Palestinians and the anti or the uh, the anarchists and you know all of the groups that George Soros you know seems to have fingers in, mm. um, and you just you manipulate through the media. And one of the manipulations that they say through all of these color revolutions is these are mostly peaceful protesters. You remember hearing that in the I Arab do remember. and remember hearing it in the Arab Spring? Mm -hmm. They're mostly, mostly peaceful. peaceful protesters. Uh-huh. But not everybody who's behind and pulling the strings is. We thought that was just something that just happened. Look at this. It's yeah. just an Arab No, it was completely coordinated by us. Is this something we were acknowledging or is this something Yeah, no, we're acknowledging now. Yeah, they're proud of it. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. Um, uh, let me play you a clip. This is from uh, Dennis Quaid. Uh, yeah. He was on with Piers Morgan on his mm -hmm. show that apparently exists. Here it is. What do you think of Trump? I think I'm going to vote for him. Really? Yeah, in the next election. Yes, I am. He just makes sense. I was ready not to vote for Trump until I, what I saw is more than politics. I, I see a weaponization of our justice system. Yeah. And uh, a a challenge to our, our constitution, uh, 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 us as Americans, that I don't think we're going to have. People might call him an asshole, but he's my <laughs> uh, The weaponization of the Department of Justice, is, does that play into what you're talking about? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're just poking people with a stick all over. Mm. Just poke, 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 poke. And you have to split the nation into good guys, bad guys. I mean, everything that has happened is part of a color revolution. Now, they will deny that they're part of a color revolution, but... Here. Yeah, here. But uh, would you deny that the CIA and the clandestine uh, um, services are involved in something here in America? You, or do you think they're clean? Do, do Everything you, seems to be going fine. I don't know right. what you're talking about. Do you, do you think that the government is in bed with our social media, or is everything on the up and up? It, they're all, these are all of the same things that happen in color revolutions. And they're happening here, but nobody's tied it together that, wait a minute, that's exactly what we did with the State Department. This is what we, we've now, we used to do it, with, you know, during the Cold War with just our people in the CIA. Well, now we don't. Now we bring in NGOs. Now we use people like George Soros to fund different groups that have been trained by us. This is what you do. Mm. Um, you, uh, Dennis Quaid in that clip, uh, you saw the movie he's going to be in, Reagan. Reagan. He plays Ronald he's Reagan. He's really good at it. I mean, he's a great actor. Yeah. I, does it surprise you that though, like, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a I, I, hard thing I to don't, believe. I didn't think of him as, you yeah, know, he just looks I, different yeah. and everything else. But I will tell you, you, you watch the movie and you see him giving speeches or even when he's out, you know, those pictures of Reagan building the fences out in his ranch in California and riding the horses. Mm -hmm. And he looks like him. And then more impressively, he sounds just like him. Yeah. And it's not like a, it's not like, you know, he does, he's not like, well, well, it's, all the yeah, day. It's not a Phil Hartman. Right. You know. He's, he's Reagan. It's not a you know caricature. No, um, I, the high a high standard that I have for this is the, the series Winning Time on HBO, um, which is about the Los Angeles Lakers. Something you definitely did not watch. No, I did not. Um, but there, it's you know about the night, early 1980s Los, Los Angeles Lakers, and the actor who portrays Magic Johnson. I lose myself in thinking he's actually Magic Johnson watching the show. Like I, I he so looks like him and so acts like him that I actually forget that it's not him. I mean, are you almost to that level with, no, with his rating? Here's where I am. Uh, what was it, the D-Day movie or one of those movies with Winston Churchill recently? That was like three of them in a row. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't remember if it was John Lithgow. One of them, the, the biggest one, was played by an actor that I just lost myself. He's Winston Churchill. Okay. The other ones were like, that's a good Winston Churchill, but it's still the actor. Right, right, okay? right. I think Dennis Quaid is somewhere in between because, and maybe because I saw a really rough cut, right. really rough cut. Um, 
And maybe because I don't know, I, I know Dennis Quaid so well. Right. You know From, what I mean? Yeah. But but I mean it is I think it's the best version of of Reagan I've ever seen. I had this when I saw that he was doing this, I had a similar feeling that I had about the Ben Franklin Apple TV thing with Michael Douglas in it. Did you watch that? I did not. Mm -hmm. um, I was a, I, ben, I love Ben Franklin. Yeah. I just like, I, I don't know that I can see past Michael Douglas. So I, I watched the first couple of episodes and I gave up because I don't trust Apple is just not going to you know, turn him into you know, <laughs> a woman. Right. You know, like, I really want to be a woman. But these damn constitutional <laughs> restraints. Uh, so I gave up on the movie, mm -hmm. but, but uh, the series, but it, it was really good. But my, he was always Michael Douglas. Right. That's not Dennis Quaid. Mm. There, there are absolutely times where you're like, I don't know if that's him or if that's a film of Reagan. Yeah, I mean, it, it's he's he's really good in it. Well, we have some of the, some similar interests when it comes to history and, and watching movies. We're going to be hanging out later today, watching a, uh, a documentary. Mm -hmm. uh, you invited me to, to this earlier mm -hmm. today. It's uh, it's mm -hmm. called The Commandant's Shadow. Shadow, I yeah. Think. Uh, it's a documentary about mm -hmm. the if if you, you haven't been to Auschwitz, I have not. Um, it is re obviously really disturbing, but the, one of the more disturbing parts is if this is where the um, crematoriums and gas chambers are, yeah. there is a fence or a, a wall, I mean from not this close, but maybe double the space, okay? Mm -hmm. It's a wall. On the other side is the commandant's house of the camp, and he had children, and they would be working and playing in the backyard. Oh, that's snow, okay? Horrible. Yeah. And you wonder, what was that like? Well, the kids didn't know. Kids had no idea, I don't know they how. They were living a normal life. They were living a normal life. At least well, what they thought this, was normal. Well, this documentary um, that's out in the next two days um, is about the son, you know, growing up and then realizing, my dad's a monster. And so he tells the story of what his life was like. He goes back through the camp now as like a 70 something year old man and then wants to meet um, the victims and survivors and apologize to them. And oh I have no idea how they're gonna react. I mean, it, it looks really good. Um, it, there was a, uh, a, a dramatization of this called Zone of Interest that I, t I mentioned briefly on the show a few weeks ago. Um, this is the real story with the real people real involved. Uh, it should be incredible. What time will we meet up? Because uh, I know we had this schedule. You, you offered to me that we were going to go together. And then right. I, so I just, well, you never and then I remember time. that I have like 14 speeches that I have to write oh. and all these other things. 14 speeches. So I, mm. so, See, so I asked, could we go tomorrow? Oh. And you oh, oh, said no. Oh, my gosh. So you have 14 speeches scheduled for tonight? That's incredible. I have two speeches that I have to write. I have... Uh, you can't write them tomorrow because obviously you, they're, they're going to be done before that happens. You talk to my wife. Anyway, uh, so I can't well, I'll, go. I'll but be at the theater. I'll see you there, right. I assume. And, that is, and I just want you to know, it is not weird <laughs> that you're going to this movie by yourself. I it didn't even be. know about it. You told me about I it. I know, because I knew you'd be interested. What, you would think we were going to have a good hang while we're watching you know, a Nazi documentary? No, well, like, you're the one who turned me on to the Hitler, the, the two Hitler books that tell me when his bowel movements were <laughs> happening. My gosh. It is it's, a little detail. It's, it's like 1,200 pages yes, of Hitler, Hitler Ascent and Hitler Downfall. Yeah. And that and was I'm, a third I one, just by started. The way. What? There's a third one. There's a whole book about just like the eight days that the Nazis still existed after Hitler died. How long whole is that book. one? It's not as long. <laughs> it was only about eight days. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, these things are huge. They're really good. I just yeah. finished Ascent, Ascent, right? Yeah. And I'm just into Downfall. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, you got a, you've got a, a hell of a road ahead of you. Yeah. A hell of a road ahead of you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I've heard the story. Yes. I think I know how it ends. Yeah. Well, yeah. every like. Eight or nine years, a new biographer comes out with like a really long Hitler biography. No, but this one is yeah. the quintessential. This is yes. like the it, yeah. standard. I think so. Yeah, Volker Ulrich is the uh, yeah. is the author, and he's the author of the next one. You read well. it in the original German, of course. Okay. Well, hey, <laughs> yeah. you know, look. I all mean, I know is my family wasn't overdoing <laughs> all sorts of weird stuff over there, Mr. Beck. Uh, Glenn Beck is the. <laughs> 
special color. Well, I'm not the one going to see the uh, concentration camp by myself for entertainment purposes. <laughs> this is a weird job we have, okay? We have weird relationships. Why do you, Please can I ask excuse. you really quick, mm -hmm. why, why are you so, inter why are you so fascinated? Because I've always been fascinated for some reason. I think guys are yeah. fascinated by World War II. Mm -hmm. But... We see a lot of these things. We read a lot. Of, I mean, 1,200 pages on Hitler, Ascent, and Downfall. Yeah. Why Is it just the uh, guy interest in that period? Uh, or Sort of. I mean, like, I think, too, it's important to have the, as you kind of said, like, the ultimate history on this, right? Like, I think you need, like, it's a really important part of history <laughs> right. uh, to understate that quite a bit. Um, and I, you know, I really wanted to have every piece of it to see, you know, because you always talk about, I mean, never forget is it's not just a slogan, right? No, like, it's right now. It is now. And I think like making sure that you see everything that happened so that led a, to those events is it's important. It's a little spooky, isn't yeah. it? Because you, you're reading it and you're like, oh, I've seen that. Oh my gosh, I've seen that. Yeah. And it's just, it yeah. doesn't mean we're down the road. We haven't, we don't have the house outside of the wall <laughs> yeah. for, for the commandant yeah. yet. But like, but it, 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 uh, the, uh, you, you don't want to take steps down that road. We're continuing to walk down that road. And at any time we can stop and turn around or go left or right. But we, 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 we got to stop this road. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And on that note, are we in a color revolution? <laughs> the underground and <laughs> Trump cabal threatening our republic is uh, airing. Uh, 9 p.m. Eastern on Blaze TV. Do not miss it. And, of course, you can subscribe to Blaze TV. Get an account, uh, blazetv.com slash stew. The promo code is stew. You'll save 20 bucks. Glenn, thank you for the for, thank you for the invite to the movie so we can hang oh, out today. Enjoy it. And then also, enjoy it. Uh, thank you for coming on the program. <laughs> right, thanks. thanks. Yes, please go, Joe. A new low from Joe Biden once again. Biden's 13th quarter approval average, lowest historically, averaging 38.7% job approval. This is the lowest of any president in all the times that it measured. The subheading here, Biden job approval showing no signs of increasing either. And this got me to thinking, what's the number? What's the number where they make a switch? It's not 38.7, I don't think. I think that they would just stick here and they would they would go and hope things would just improve. But, like, if it kept falling, what's the number? I'll give you, I would present to you the number where they actually make a switch to another candidate, force him out somehow, is 29%. Now, that's still a long ways away. That is a, that is a bunch of his own people abandoning him. And that's what I think needs to happen. But that's my number. They, it start, you see a poll result... And not just one, but like the average getting to about 29%, maybe a few polls at 29%. That's my number. I think at that point they would switch it and I would start getting nervous about my bet with Glenn over Michelle Obama being the candidate. So there you go. Uh, that's pretty bad. Also, DDHQ uh, has a, a forecast model and they have released it. This is going to predict uh, chances of uh, the presidency, Senate and House. And they're one of the good ones. Uh, you know, Nate Silver and maybe the New York Times are kind of the more well-known ones. DDHQ, though, does a very good job with their election coverage. They're aligned with the Hill as well. Uh, they released their uh, uh, model uh, yesterday. And it gives Trump a 58% chance of winning the presidency. Uh, it show, gives the GOP an 80% chance of winning the Senate and a 64% chance of holding the House majority. Now, because the, the GOP Senate underperformed the highest of expectations in 2022. You can't get to a filibuster-proof majority here, um, almost definitely. But obviously holding all three um, uh, at the same time would be a big deal for Republicans. They could at least get some stuff done, you'd think. Uh, and if you're looking at the prediction markets, um, Sports Handle aggregates a bunch of these markets, uh, like Polymarket and uh, you know all these different ones. Um, they say 57.2% chance of winning the November election. Uh, Biden is at 41. So that is down since just April by about six points for Joe Biden. So bottom line is Joe's got another new low. This is not going well, but I don't think it's at the point yet where they're seriously talking about. I mean, they're seriously having conversations. Should we switch this guy out? But I don't think the effort is real until we see an even bigger drop off from these already new lows.
Your nature shall be balanced. That's why we have balance of nature, okay? You gotta make sure you're getting your fruits and vegetables. Your mom told you to eat them a long time ago. You didn't listen. Now you're old and you look like me. And that's not great, you know, it's not a great point. Like, People don't look at me as the picture of health. That's why Balance of Nature can help you out with these sorts of things. It's an on-the-go solution, proprietary blend of 31 fruits and vegetables, and they come in easy-to-swallow capsules, give your body much of the nourishment that it needs. You're not going to eat 31 different kinds of produce in a single day, so why not go with Balance of Nature? Fill all that out. Get, your fruits, get the fruits and veggies that you need in your body, and Balance of Nature can do this in seconds for you. You'll get 35% off plus $10 of any additional sets with your first order as a preferred customer, and use the discount code STU when you go there because you'll get a, a discount. It's limited to five sets. You'll save a ton of money, though, while getting the fruits and vegetables you need in your diet. Balanceofnature.com. Use the promo code STU for 35% off. Balanceofnature.com. The promo code is STU for 35% off at Balance of Nature. Dot com. There's this incident we talked about where there was a bombing in Israel that, you know, supposedly killed dozens of people. And I listening to a podcast today and they're like, how, why does this keep happening? If Israel's not trying to target civilians, why do we keep getting, I mean, they say they're going after Hamas and they keep hitting all these civilians. This is how human shields work, right? Like you put the Hamas people and their weapons nearby the civilians. So when the bomb goes off, in this particular case, it seems to have set off a bunch of ammunition being stored right by the civilians. And guess what happens in that circumstance? Um, I, I, if you want more detail on the evidence of this, uh, I encourage you to read this piece. D did Israel's knee-jerk critics get it wrong in Rafa? That's uh, from Noah Rothman over at National Review. Check that one out. But I also wanted to hit this before we uh, take a break, which is this pier. $320 million of your tax dollars going to build a stupid pier over in Gaza so that we, for some reason, give aid to the Gazans, not all the hundreds and hundreds of countries that are saying Israel's so evil. We're the ones that are supposed to do this. Uh, all of this, all this money spent, and the whole thing broke. We've now, the pier's broken. This is the overhead view. You see the left, it's all put together, and now it's already in pieces because of choppy waters. As I pointed out in the tweet, uh, it's Biden 2020 versus Biden 2024. Uh, but this is a, a, an embarrassing catastrophe, and all the money you'll ever pay in taxes won't even pay for the repair of this pier, let alone for the pier itself. It's infuriating, and it's just so USA. Okay, so here's what happened. You know, violence between nations is really bad for a bunch of reasons. Obviously, all the damage that's done, but also it's so unrefined, you know? We need to come up with a better, more refined way to have discourse between disagreeable nations. And finally, we've gotten there <laughs> because North Korea has now flown 260 feces-filled balloons across the border to the south. You know, like you put a bag of dog poop on the porch, you ring, you ring the doorbell. And then you run away, and they come out, and, st and you light it on fire, and they stamp out the mess, and they get the poop on their shoe. That's basically what North Korea is doing. They're flying these across the board. These are real pictures, um, 260 of them. And the funny thing is, when you see it in the air, it looks like a giant, just one giant piece of poo. And there, <laughs> and there it is. I don't know. I mean, maybe we should get to the point where we're just trolling each other like we're on Twitter. Instead of, instead of fighting with giant armies versus each other, let's just come up with the most annoying things we can do to each other. And solve our, our disputes that way. I think it's a much higher minded world. So I'm all for the poop balloon attacks from North Korea. Not normally do I uh, support North Korea, but in this case.